Evening all, this is No Holds Barred, or Ryan, aka No Holds Barred. Um, I haven't done a video on YouTube in quite a while, but I've got some friends who want to discuss the Fury Wilder fight from last night. It seems like um, uh, it's got a lot of fans talking, so it's a you know it's an interesting one to talk about. So, without further ado, I'm going to. I've got three fret fans with me, uh, Angelo, Slaven, and Craig. They're friends of mine on Facebook, and they they watch a lot of boxing. So I'm going to ask each of them the same five questions, and then I'll give my uh, thoughts as well. So, uh, I'll start with Angelo. Um, what did you think of the result and how did you score it? I thought the, uh, the result was a bogus result. I didn't actually start scoring the fight until um, Welder knocked Tyson Fiore down. That's how one-sided it was to Tyson Fiore. So, are we talking round six, seven, he scored the first knockdown. Uh, so, basically, I gave the first six rounds to uh, Fiore. Mm -hmm. I only give the round to Wilder, 10-8 round, which will give him two rounds. And again, in the last round, a 10-8 round. So I give him four rounds. And if I want to be nice, I'll give him a fifth round here. And that's about it. So you're talking mm -hmm. six rounds, six or seven rounds to Fiora. Seven, sorry, seven rounds to Fiora and five to Wilder. That's how I would have scored the fight. Yeah, so... But... Um... But if you did score five rounds to Wilder, then mm. uh, and with the two ten eight rounds, then you know you would have had a draw. So no, with, I was basically giving him the, the five rounds with the knockdowns included, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. That's how I was scoring it. So, but you so because you gave him four rounds, you think that he won by like a point or two. So you think it was quite close, though. I think it was close with the knockdowns that were involved. You know, we'd be stupid to say, look, Tyson Fiore knocked the head out of him, um, but Wilder didn't do anything. We can't say that. Um, the judges score fights differently, and it's whether the judges preferred Tyson Fiore's, you know, relentless work or the aggression Deontay Wilder shown through, mm -hmm. throughout the middle rounds and the end of the fight. But again, boxing's not just about a sport <laughs> getting knocked out, it's about contesting throughout the rounds but I give it Fiora I just yeah. have to give a little bit of an argument and say let's not be too biased here and mm. say you know Wilder didn't do anything because he did. he did he did show up in parts but he didn't yeah. do enough to, he didn't do enough to win the fight and he certainly didn't do enough to draw to get a draw neither yeah all right well uh, same question to you Craig what what did you think um it was interesting because I saw a lot of people gave the first round to Fury whereas I gave the first round to Wilder but then I didn't give him anything else. You could you could argue the second round. It was, it was kind of one of those. But I didn't give him anything else until the ninth from the knockdown and the twelfth. Um, and so if you buy it based it on that, I well I basically added at one fifteen, one thirteen Wilder. Uh, sorry, Fury. Mm -hmm. uh, and I well I don't know what the other judge was watching. The British judge, you know, you could you could say it was. It was okay. It weren't, you know, dubious kind of thing. But the one fifteen, one eleven from uh, the I can't think of the judge's name now um, was that oh, the Mexican Alejandro Ro yeah, Rokin or Rokin or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rokin. That's it. And I, I, I just found that kind of embarrassing. And I just wonder when that type of, you know, when them judges are going to actually be out of employment because I just don't think they deserve to ever judge a fight again. I mean. Oh. That's basically saying that Fury won seven rounds, eight rounds, uh, yeah, while run seven, seven rounds, eight rounds, eight rounds. five. You know, and I can't make an argument for him winning more than three. Yeah. You know, he, he, you could say, he, 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 you know, the second round was could have been a 10-10. I, I gave the first round to Wilder because I don't think Fury did enough in the first. He, he, he In the latter part of the first round, he kind of came back, but he, apart from that, he hadn't really thrown anything in the first, so I, I kind of gave that to Wilder. Mm. But after that, you know, there was, I think uh, Wilder just, he was, I think he was just bamboozled by him. I don't think he kind of expected that kind of fury. Yeah. But I, I definitely gave it to uh, Fury. Uh, mm. But as I say, in the end, I had about 115, 113, and. Mm. It was definitely, it's definitely a hometown decision, shall we say. <laughs> and what about you, Slavin? 
Yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, uh, <sighs> I didn't score the fight, but uh, I think Fury won at least eight rounds, I think. Uh, and uh, he had some good shots in round seven and eight. And uh, But before that, he didn't really do so much. He just was uh, good at, uh, you know, outboxing Wilder. And, and making him miss a lot, I think. And I think also Wilder won the first round. And uh, mm. I don't know, fifth maybe, as Angelo said, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, my opinion is, is to say I scored it 116 to 110 to Fury because I gave him uh, 10 rounds to two. Uh, I suppose you could have made an uh, argument for Wilder to be given a third or a fourth, but I definitely don't think a fifth. Uh, by round six, I had Fury 6-0 up. I think then in round seven, he produced his best round. And ironically, mm. um, the, two, the two judges who weren't in the promoter's pocket, shall we say, they both scored round seven to Wilder which I thought was a, a was probably Tyson Fury's most dominant round. Yeah. And they both scored it to uh, Wilder, whereas the, the, the judge who seemingly was there to screw um, Fury out, he had to change a heart mid-round, a mid-fight, mid and actually gave that one to Fury because he had already figured, he'd already filled out his um, scorecard before the fight. He gave the first <laughs> four, four rounds to Wilder now, early rounds are often very close anyway, so a lot of the time I think round one should be scored 10 all because it's, it's a feeling out round, it's very close, neither fighter wants to really engage. But in this one, I felt that Tyson Fury dominated from start to finish aside from the rounds that uh, he was knocked down in. And even then, he got up and he, you know, he won the, the latter parts of the round. So... I, I I don't think you could make a case, a, a strong case for anything more than two or three rounds and a soft case for, for a fourth round. So, yeah, I, I was really disappointed. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. Yeah. And the next question is, did Fury surprise you with how well he fought? So, back to Angelo. Um, not really, because we know that when Fury gets given a test, he always prevails and he always shows up. We see him against Klitschko. And I think, personally, I think that is the best Tyson Fury we've seen. The one against Klitschko, not the one against Wilder. Um, so, no, he didn't surprise me in the sense he came to fight. And he was bang on cue. He, he did well. The only thing I will suggest is when I said the best fight was against Vladimir. If he took into this fight the strength conditioning he, he had for the uh, Vladimir Klitschko, and I think he was more fitter for Vladimir. He wouldn't even have got caught with the punches he got caught with. He certainly wouldn't have got caught in the 12th. He would have had a sharper mindset. He would have punched. He would have gone on the back, back foot. I didn't see much on his back foot or bicycling around the ring. And what surprised me was the fact he had Freddie Roach in his corner. He had Ricky Atten in his corner. And yes, he had, I think his name's Ben Davis. And Ben Davis is his, his, his coach. But at the end of the day, if you've got Ricky Atten in your corner to put a gum shield in your mouth, and you've got Freddie Roach to feed you water in the corner, then you're wasting your time. In them championship rounds, them 10 to 12 rounds, that's when you get the opinions of Ricky Atten and Freddie Roach. I reckon we would have seen a different outcome. Mm. Okay. And uh, what about you, Craig? Yeah, I'll well, second kind of a lot of what Angelo said then. Um, when you've got Freddie Roach as a cutsman and uh, Ricky on the on the bucket, it's it's kind of bizarre. It, um, I, I didn't see what input they were actually giving, to be fair. Um, ben Davidson, to be fair to him, he, you know, he stayed calm. He gave some very good advice. But experience in times like that kind of matter a lot more, but... As for Tyson Fury himself, I think, you know, I did think that he really, really surprised me because after watching his two comeback fights, I thought he was kind of very lethargic, very you know, methodical and almost 
circus like in the first one. Um, <laughs> so I, I predicted an early Wilder knockout because I just thought he'd get careless very early on. Um, and he, he, he did surprise me. He did surprise me. But in another way, should I be surprised given what he did when he went out to Germany? Um, he, he, I think he's proved to me and probably to a lot of other people that he actually is the real deal. You know, um, he's he basically, it was like a, it was literally like a masterclass. He, mm. he, he was making Wilder miss time and time and time again. Mm. And, you know, that's, that's an art in itself to, to, uh, you know, to just miss by millimetres and just be out of the way. So his reflexes were there. Mm. Um, I think he slowed down towards the end of the fight. But um, for me, yeah, he did surprise me, but pleasantly surprised. And I thought that, uh, as I say, I felt sorry for him in the end because I think that he was robbed of the decision that he deserved. Yeah. And uh, what about you, Slavin? Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, uh, in, his, in his two comeback fights, he didn't he didn't look good. And, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just thought that uh, he would kind of fade, like uh, after the eighth round or something. So, but he just kept on going. Uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, he showed some really good skills, and that that was also a bit of su- surprise to me, uh, because you know, I mean, earlier he just used uh, he used to win by being so big and so aggressive, more than you know being a really good technical boxer. But I don't know when he got so good, but. I don't know, even if Freddie Roach has something to do with that. Uh, he, uh, he yeah, yeah. Yeah, well... Oh, sorry, have you finished? Yeah, yeah, I'm finished. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, I didn't think he would be as good as he was because he didn't look very good in his first two fights of his comeback. Yeah. Uh, and then he was stepping up to, you know, either the best or the second best heavyweight in the world. And he's been flawed before, although he always got up and, you know, carried on. And that's what he did last night as well. He got flawed twice and he got back up and carried on. But I thought with the, you know, three years out, uh, the, the, you know, the drug habits that he's had, the putting on all that weight and then losing it. Um, the fact that, you know, Wilder probably punches harder than all of his other opponents. I thought all of that would combine. And he'd probably get stopped late on. And when he did get knocked down in round nine, I thought, oh, this is it. It's going to end. And he, and it didn't. And then he, he won the rest of round nine. He won round 10. He won round 11, I thought. And then in round 12, he got knocked down again and then, you know, carried on. So, uh, yeah, I was really impressed by him. I didn't think he was going to be that good. I thought, I thought he might be ahead on the cards going into the late rounds. But mainly... Because Fury, uh, because Wilder hasn't fought like you know he hasn't really fought the best caliber heavyweights. Mm. Only really Luis Ortiz could you call like world class, like you know really really good like elite. Um, so anyway, yeah. So uh, Wilder has has he now been found out? Was what did Fury you know um, prove that he was just uh, an overrated champion, or was it just a case of Fury being so good? What do you think, Angelo? I don't think he's been found out. I think everyone knows that, you know, Wilder's an easy target to hit. He's uh, quite tall. He's not very defensively smart. He uses his reflexes a lot. He uses his offensive, you know, skill. So he doesn't have to depend on defensive skill. So in that sense, no. Ortiz's shown he could get hit. Ortiz is, you know, pedigree. He's, like you say class and last night he's shown that as well he's back in the mix but no I don't think he's been found out I don't think you've got um, a plan A how to beat him I don't think you have the there's a certain word for it but I don't think you have have that to say well if Anthony Joshua fights um, well the next what can he take from what Fiori did the, the two different fighters you know Anthony Joshua can't do what Tyson Fiori can do and Tyson Fiori can't do what Anthony Joshua does so I don't think he's been, you know, he's um, he's been caught out 
by any stretch of the imagination. I think, if anything, he's learnt a lot from this fight. He's learnt that he does have a jab. There were times in that fight he was landing with that jab, and I was thinking, no, Tyson, what are you doing? At one point, I thought he actually broke Tyson Fury's nose with the jab he was landing. So, if anything, I don't think he's been caught out. I think he's progressed. And if there was a rematch, I, I wouldn't take it if I was Tyson Fury because I think he's been hurt. And once you've been hurt, you know a man's weak spot or where to hit him next time you fight, and you'll you'll figure the Rubik's cube out a lot earlier than you did than you did. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. What do you think, Craig? Um, I the thing is with him, I think there was a couple of fundamental mistakes from Wilder uh, last night. I believe coming in at fifteen two wasn't good um, because I believe he he kind of he boiled himself down too much. And I think that took an edge away from him because for some, for a lot of last night, I thought that he just looked very lethargic. And you know, with his his assets are always going to be his power and his speed. And I just didn't feel that his speed was was up to much last night, as not as much as what I've seen if you look in previous fights. I mean, even against Ortiz, I'm taking into account that Ortiz, yes, he's 39 or 145. <laughs> <39. or whatever. laughs> yeah, you know, he, he's. Uh, I don't. I don't think he's been found out. I, I think. I, I genuinely believe that Tyson Fury has been underrated for a very long time. I mean, you ha- you have to take into account that he went to Germany to fight a champion that hadn't been beaten in ten years and had absolutely destroyed everything in front of him. You know, mm. when we're talking people like Povetkin in his prime, and he made him look foolish. I mean, what did he put him down four or five times? Mm. And people, you know, big strong heavyweights, Samuel Peter, people like that. Yeah, um, and then Tyson just went over there and and kind of done a number on him, and I I thought that it kind of as much as people you know said oh well done Fury, they, it was through gritted teeth, and you had a lot of people saying oh Klitsch goes over the hill, and you know it was mm. he's got him at the right time, and I believe that last night it showed that Tyson Fury is the real deal, mm. you know he I so I don't think Wild has been found out. I just think he came up against somebody that's got great footwork, which is something that Wilder hasn't got. His footwork mm. absolutely shocking, and it's one of his, it's one of the weaker points of him. I mean, Ortiz found that out with him. Fury mm. kind of picked him off at will last night, but he's got that leveler, he's got that power leveler, and he's you know he's got that speed. But I think, as I say, I think he came in too light last night. Mm. But, yeah. All right. Okay. And uh, Slavin. Yeah, I mean. Uh... First of all, uh, Fury is not really an easy guy to fight, right? (laughs) So, because he's so tall and uh, he's got his reach and all that, now he's got also the technical ability that he didn't have before, one can say. But at the same time, I never really, you know, I never really rated Wilder like some other people have, perhaps. Because uh, he has fought, as you said, right now, uh, mostly like, you know, lower level fighters, except for Luis Ortiz. Mm. And uh, when he fought uh, Bermain, Styvern, the only time that he went the distance before this, that was against that guy. Mm. But that guy was never really known for coming in good shape so mm. in their second fight he was i i think in in worse shape so he got stopped mm. so uh that's i just don't think wilder has has what it takes you know mm. to 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 beat anthony joshua for instance mm. so uh i think uh as I said, I never really thought of him so like some kind of, mm. you know, really complete fighter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I don't think he's been found out because I didn't think he was much more than that anyway. I just think that uh, uh, what has happened is I think that Wilder, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Fury was slightly underrated because of the fact that he's only been back for like a year he only fought like two, you know, simple warm ups. And I thought that he'd probably look terrible because of that, or maybe not terrible, but not great. But in actual fact, he did look like great. 
uh, and that is what made Wilder not look very good. But what Wilder did is precisely what he's done for 39 fights or whatever it is, which is basically punch sitting targets because uh, in his two fights against Bimani Stavern, he was in against a bloke who doesn't move his head. Hmm. Uh, and in the hmm. second fight, not only did he not move his head, but he, he you know, he was a shot fighter. And uh, the likes of like Molina and all that, they, they've got like decent chins, but he still ended up going, I think it was like eight rounds with Molina, nine with Spilka, 11 hmm. with du- Duhopas. So, so yeah, so uh, Wilder always does what he does, which is basically throw those like long range sort of overhand punches that he throws like, you know, wildly, you mm-hmm. know, wild, the wild, the wilder, the wild puncher. Um, but, but he did land two of them. And, uh, you know, so when people say things like, oh, he only needs to land one, I suppose that's true with him because he did. He, he landed like one punch in round nine and one in round 12 and they both floored him. I mean, uh, OK, he, he landed a couple more on top, but, uh, you know, he's got that one punch power. So I think he's not exactly been found out because he, he's got the one punch power and all that. But if he's fighting fighters who don't move their heads and who don't have good footwork, then he's probably going to knock them out. But Fury proved that, you know, with a bit of boxing skills, uh, maybe not. So, yeah, so I, I, I think some people overrated him. But then the same could be said of Fury because, I mean, years ago, you know, don't, let's not, let's, Wilder has definitely improved because uh, about three years ago, he was terrible. Now he's actually, you know, he's, he's knocking the likes of Fury on the canvas. Um, and Fury, about six or seven years ago, was like arguably losing to John McDermott. So, yeah. so he's improved a lot as well. Uh, anyway, so uh, penultimate question. Did you think that the 10 count in round 12 was slow? And the reason I ask that is a lot of, you know, so-called fans, I think it's probably the casual ones. They're all saying, oh, it was slow, it was slow. But, you know, do you think it was slow, uh, Angelo? Well, when it happened, first thing I thought is good night, Sasha and Fiore. I watched it for three seconds. I put my head down. I couldn't see it. I thought he killed the guy. The way he went down, the way he was fast asleep, I thought he killed the guy. So I'm, I'm with my head down. My girlfriend shouting, come on, Tyson, get up, get up. And I'm thinking he's got no chance. So I got my head down in vain. And then she said, he's got up, he's got up. So I looked up and it felt like the longest, if that was 10 seconds at the time, it felt like the longest 10 seconds I've ever been through in my life. So back then, I was scratching my head thinking, has he just beat the count, really? Has, has he really got up before the 10 count? So I thought, I've got to look back at that at a late date tomorrow, maybe when the video surfaces or whatever. So I see the video and... You've got to remember, referees count when they want to count, not the minute the fighter goes down. So if you look, he goes down, the fight, the referee crouches down and pr- he's probably looking in Tyson Fury's eyes to see if he's out cold because he probably would have waved it straight off like most fight, uh, referees don't. So I reckon he got down and then he counted. So you've mm. got to judge it from when he got on his knee and started to count. But in all mm. fairness... When I seen the video, my girlfriend stated to me, look at the clock, and you see it's in sync with the clock, how he's counting. Mm. The only thing people will say is, well, one minute, if the fight is not to his feet by eight, he should be counted mm. out. Mm. Um, but like we touched on off-air, commissions, boxing commissions have different rules. We need to know if in the rules, was it the fighter is classed as a knockout or the TKO, if not back on his feet at uh, eight seconds now if he's not then he's not counted out because I think he was getting to his feet and it was I think around about nine nine and a half seconds he was on his feet for me hmm. yeah alright okay what do you think Craig um, when I, again like Angelo just said when I first saw it I thought god it's it's very very slow and then I watched it back four or five times and it was it was inside the 10 seconds but the one thing I will say uh, regarding being back on your feet, if you're counting eight at ten, you're counting eight at ten. So I believe you should have and be able to utilise the full ten seconds. Mm. You know, and if you're as long as you're back on your feet and your feet are flat on the floor, 
by the, by the end of that nine, nine and a half, ten count, then, you know, you, you're legitimately ready to fight again if the, if the referee sees fit. Mm. Um, but I, as regards for a slow count, I don't believe it was a slow count. And, but the one thing I will say, again, touching on what Angelo had said, is I'm absolutely amazed that he got up because they were two brutal, powerful punches flush on the chin. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it was over. I generally thought, it was, you know, he was, he was toast. So, and the video that went round afterwards, I don't know whether you gents saw that, mm. when Wilder was celebrating and then he turned and looked at him as if to say, how have you got up from that? Yeah, just the wry right smile on his face as if to say, mm. you know, I can't believe you've you you're, you're actually up. Mm. But the but no, I don't believe the count was slow. I think oh. it's absolutely bang on. Mm. All right, and uh, um, Slaven. Yeah, I I just I just saw that that knockdown again, and uh, I counted, and uh, he got up uh, at eight after my. Count, but the referee didn't start counting until a second after he had hit the, the canvas, right? Mm. So it's like a seven count, actually. I mm. think so. He got up at seven, I think, and then he just looked all right. And so, no, it wasn't a slow count. I mm. wouldn't say that. Well. Um, I haven't had a chance to re-watch the fight, but I did have a chance to watch a video clip which shows the knockdown, which uh, which is why I asked the question, because on Facebook and other social media, there's lots of people who I think are probably just like Wilder fans who are trying to look for a reason to, to give him the win. And they were posting a video around. But when you watch the video, if you have a look at the time on the bottom of the screen, which is the time of the round, the three minute clock, uh, he hits the canvas at 2.21 and he's up on his feet at 2.11. So he's he's basically done the, the whole like 10 seconds. Now, <clears throat> Angelo was saying about the eight second rule. Now, I don't know if there is a rule. I can't I can't quite think, but I think it's probably a commission, you know, commission by commission thing. I don't know if you have to be on your, your feet by eight or nine. Otherwise, you're counted out. I'm not sure because I have seen that happen. But, but, you know, let's face it, this is boxing. They make up the rules as they go along. Yeah. But just watch any classic fight that you like. Watch Arturo Gatti against Mickey Ward in their first fight. Um, Frank Cappuccino, the referee, he counts nine. And as he, get, as he says nine, Gatti then stands up. So he's up yeah. ten. And that's what Fury did. So it, it's just oh. one of those things where I think there are some fans, you know, like casuals, that watch that one fight a year and I think they're just following Fury this uh yeah um they're just following Wilder for this fight and you know people are saying that Fury won and they're trying to look for reasons why he didn't win. But no, he was up and even if he wasn't up at 10, even if he was up at 10 and uh 50 milliseconds, the the 10 count is a very difficult thing to do. I mean it might sound easy but if you count to 10 50 times, you probably won't count exactly the same amount of time those 50 times as the one uh, as the ones before, because people don't really, you know, a second is a mathematical sort of equation. But most people, you know, if you count one, two, three, that might sound like 10, like one, two, three and all that. But, or you might count one, two, oh. three. It, it's two completely different things. So. You know, they're, they're humans and there's going to be some error. And let's face it, uh, in most fights, when you see a person get knocked down, when you see a fighter hit the canvas, they usually get about 20 to 25 seconds recovery. Because after they're up at 10, like Fury, the referee then asks them three or four times, are you right? Are you, are you OK to continue? Are you sure? Yeah, and he's holding his gloves, you know, he's seeing if his arms are, you know, if he's, if he's still got his punch resistance. And then that takes about another 10 seconds. So, yeah. I, it, uh, it opens an interesting can of worms, actually, because, you know, you could pose the question, you know, do you think that they should have a computer generated uh, clock? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I said to somebody on Facebook tonight, I said maybe they should introduce stopwatches for referees. But I said, but that's ridiculous because oh. there's already a timekeeper outside of the ring that yeah. the referee can, the referee, um, as soon as a fighter goes down, the timekeeper starts counting. So if the referee hasn't started counting, he takes one look over at the timekeeper, who's got his hands up, counting like 
you know, six, seven. So he's counting his fingers. Yeah. And then he knows what the what the count is and he continues it. Um, and also, a referee can't be given any more to do because mm. his his primary job is to make sure that the fighters are safe. So if yeah. he's if he's having a look at his stopwatch and go, where's <laughs> the start button? Oh, crap, yeah. I can stress stop. <laughs> well, you've and lost the bloke's the getting already, his, Yeah, oh, and shit. the bloke's getting his head caved in. Well, again, so, I need to touch on this, Ryan, because I didn't mention it, but I talked to it off air. We're not, we've not got a Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas situation here where, you know, Buster Douglas was counted out for 15 seconds. It's nothing like it, so you, you can't compare it to that. No. Um, and again, talking about the eight-second rule, I think that's just to make sure, don't give the referee any doubt, so be up by eight. I think mm -hmm. that's that's the rule. Uh, again, and even if there is a commission that says be up by eight, I think the referee uses that as his discretion. If he yeah. sees you wobbling, or, or you can't say Tyson Fury was wobbling or dazed. He got up at ten and he stood as straight as you know any man could be. He didn't well, if you think about it, punch. Angelo, what he done yeah. as well, he went to the, he made him run to the corner, didn't he? He said go to the corner, and he he, he kind of ran jogged across yeah. the corner. So he obviously had his faculties about him. Definitely, and uh, I think the biggest winner here is uh, the bookies, right? And yeah. I think the referee needs praising. I thought he was. I thought he refed it well. To be fair, who was it? Who? Uh, oh, uh, it was Malik Scott. Remember when um, Derek Chisora knocked yeah. up Malik Scott? That was a case of the eight-second thing, I think, because uh, I'm sure it was nine. He yeah, he counted him yeah. out when he was down, and he was on his knee. And then he got up at eight or nine and the referee mm. called it off and he was going crazy. And of course, the commentators were like, oh, well, you know, he should have been up at 10. But he was his excuse was, well, I've got until 10. But they Wait, said, you no, could also got... look at Charles Martin against AJ. Yeah. That was well, yeah. So, yeah. So, I, but again, this is boxing. They make up the rules as they go along. So there, there might be a rule like that in some commissions or even every commission. But the referees are probably told, you know, do what you feel best. Mm. Mm. All right. So final question. Uh, would either of these two beat Anthony Joshua if they were to fight? So, Angelo. Well, Anthony Joshua is just a foot for me. And I don't want Anthony Joshua fans to take it the wrong way. But they have put him on this massive pedestal. Now, is it because he's a genetic genius? If Tyson Fury had Anthony Joshua's body, would he be put on a pedestal? If Tyson Fury had his management, his promoter, would he? I don't know. So, what I've seen from him, he's a very stand-up fighter. He's very powerful, but he's very robotic. So, I don't think he, again, I don't think he catches Wilder. Uh, I don't think he catches Fury with the punches he's been catching people with. And the fact Povetkin was a smaller man, if he had the two-stone advantage over over him, we would have seen a different fight. So again, he's been doing good work, but with much smaller men. If you look at the guy who fought the, what was he called now? That Derek Chichara knocked out recently. Takam. Takam. If you look out Takam, Takam, you know, he's a decent boxer, but if you look out Takam sort of was coming into that fight, again, I don't know what's been happening in the last year or so, but there's a mould, <laughs> there must be some mould in boxing lurking about, because some of the decisions, whether it's referee decisions, going far back to even Cal Froch and, um, what was his name, Groves, the first fight, oh, on to Pacquiao in Australia, you know, it looks like there's loads of robbery and controversy at the moment, and it's bringing the sport down, if, we should be talking about heavyweight division, division, and the realm of the heavyweight division being restored again, and we're not, we're talking about controversy, about poor, uh, poor judging. We're talking all about the things that we shouldn't be talking about. Yeah. Yeah, true. Uh, Craig? Um, I believe, yeah, it's confirmed what I think last night again, um, that I, I believe that it would be very close between Joshua and Wilder. I think it's whoever lands first. Um, but the one thing I will say is... Joshua times his punches better than Wilder does. And I don't believe if it was the 12th round and that knockdown that happened against Joshua, I don't believe he would have let him off the hook. I think he would have, I think he'd have finished Fury off. 
Uh, I think he's a better. People say about Wilder's power and things, but I think Joshua was a better finisher than Wilder. Mm. I just think Wilder's got this freakish power. But um, my personal opinion, I think that Tyson Fury is the best of the three of them. I think he would score Joshua um, mm. because he's he's predictable in what he you know his movements predictable, and I just think he would do exactly the same to him as what he did to Klitschko. He would just put him at arm's length, and he wouldn't allow him to get mm. inside. And I think. You know, I don't think he's as quick as Wilder. Um, so I don't, you know, I, I, I believe Tyson Fury beats AJ very, very easily. Uh, a, a big wide UD. I don't think he'll knock him out because I don't think he's got that concussive punch and power. But I, I believe it'd just be a wide, probably a shot out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do, I, I believe that if you looked at all three of their assets, I think Wilder's the quickest of the lot. Mm. Fury is the smartest of the lot, mm. and AJ is the better, the best finisher of the three. Yeah. Once, once he gets you hurt, he does. He just doesn't let you off. He, yeah. You, you've gone, and he's done that basically against, you know, good good fighters, really good fighters. Um, so, I believe, you know, I, I believe he would possibly beat Wilder, but I don't think he would beat Fury. Yeah. All right then. And what do you think, Simon? Yeah, I can definitely see Fury like being able to frustrate AJ, you know, and win on points. Most, yeah, definitely. If he can stay away from, you know, if he can avoid uh, getting hit a lot, of course. Because when Joseph Parker fought uh, Joshua, he was able to really, you know, you know, frustrate him and and uh, you know get him out of his his comfort zone mm. because he was so you know good at boxing and moving but uh, i thought like if parker had been a little bigger you know then he would have won i think definitely because that was the thing that went against him in that fight and also that he isn't such a big massive puncher so Fury, I think, can win. Yeah, but uh, Wilder, I, I don't think so but because uh, I think Joshua is just a better all-round fighter, simple, simply <laughs> than Wilder. And uh, of course, Wilder can get perhaps get a bit lucky and score a, perhaps a knockout. But we also saw. When Joshua fought Klitschko, he was uh, down, and uh, that was a good punch that put him down. But he got up, and he also he was hit a lot in that fight. But he still came back, mm. so he showed that he can take a good punch mm. and and bounce back. So yeah, so, yeah. I don't really give Wilder much chance in that fight. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think Fury is the better of the of the three, and I and I think he's probably still got more to to show because he's he's still fairly young, and uh, he's um, you know he's only had two comeback fights and a big one, and you know we we all think he deserved to win that one. Uh, yeah, Joshua. I think his problem is he doesn't move his head. He's robotic. He fights you know in straight lines. Uh, he doesn't have very good foot movement he's just got that like brutish power and he's got a good defense because he keeps his hands up high mm-hmm. um so i i think that fury outboxes him probably easier than he did to wilder because the sh- the sort of power shots that joshua landed on klitschko was because klitschko especially in his older days he had the tendency to sort of cling on yeah. and that fight that fight with uh, joshua which was like his final fight it, it, it reminded me of his like early fights when he was getting knocked out by the likes of Corey Sanders. Like yeah. he was trying to control the younger, stronger fighter by like clinching him. And of course, Joshua just landed one of his massive uppercuts, and uh, you know, and uh, and he was he was able to land those like big punches. Whereas Fury, he's going to keep him. He would keep him at bay for the whole fight, and where he comes in in straight angles and all that, and he doesn't throw wild punches like wild does like wilder the 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 punches that caught fury and took him off guard were 
out of nowhere they were they were sort of like Manny Pacquiao type punches like just from nowhere very quick very like shocking and you know that's why I think that um Josh uh, yeah I think Fury would beat Joshua probably like nine times out of ten I think but Joshua versus Wilder would be a lot closer because neither of them have got very good footwork they both tend to fight sort of quite robotically but Wilder I think is quicker and he is a little bit more unpredictable so I think that would be a case of who lands first but Mm. Joshua does keep Mm. his guard up he does he's not as open he's not as open to being hit unlike Fury who like you know he likes to showboat a bit Joshua's a better counter puncher as well I think I think he would catch Wilder on the way in yeah so yeah that that's why I I would favor Joshua sort of seven times out of three against Wilder because I think Wilder would miss one of his windmill punches and walk in on an uppercut or something yeah Yeah. I think again Tyson Fury didn't have the telling power to really capitalize on it and and he did have Wilder hurt a few times and for some reason he was gun shy now I don't know if he was gun shy because something may have come back Respecting with the power, yeah. Yeah, and there was just something not there last night. I mean, when he hurt him, he should have jumped on him because he knew he was gassed out. Then two punches later on would have affected him. He wouldn't have had a recovery rate. Mm. You know, he was hurt. Jump on him. Go for the knockout yourself. Throw it all oh. on the line. Well, it did. It swung in that 12th round, didn't it? Because he, I think he hurt Wilder with a body shot. And, mm. and then he hurt him again. I think it was a right hand over the top. And Wilder was completely gassed because he'd gone to kind of just finish him off. And I think, you know, his, his arms reminded me of something like Inspector Gadget. It was like they were stretching to the back end of the arena and he was missing by that far. Mm. That, yeah, that's the other reason I would fancy Fury over Joshua um, because of stamina. St- um, Tyson might be like big, tall, gangly and all that, but he's got good mm-hmm. stamina. Whereas yeah, yes. um, Joshua, he seems to fade after about round six. Yeah, he gave um, a lot. Of I thought that in the back end fight. Yeah, like, and um, Wilder, maybe he would start his favourite against Joshua because of the stamina issue. Because interestingly, even though Wilder's won you know, 99% knockouts, he, he, he seems to have quite good stamina. Like we saw last night, his yeah, two knockdowns yeah. came in the last three, like, three or yeah, four yeah. rounds. Yeah, I think yeah. he's got a better chin than people give him credit for as well. Yeah, that's yeah. the other thing. I think all three of them have got better chins than people think, maybe. Yeah. Because uh, they've all they've all proven they can take good shots. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Fury's, i have being honest, Fury's chin's a bit. I don't know if it's deteriorating over the years. I've seen we've seen uh, Furfa put him down. Sure, Furfa put him down. The uh, the Romanian American. Mm. Yeah, so I think he's got the worst chin, but. He's got the, the great determination to get off the floor. No one can nail him and keep him down. Like no. everyone touched on, it was like the Undertaker getting up. He couldn't yeah. roll it. <laughs> he's, got, he's got fantastic powers of recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lots of good fighters with good chins have uh, got knocked down a lot. Like Marquez and Calzaghi, they used to go down yeah. all the time. But they never used to let it defeat them. Yeah, they, they only got stronger. Like yeah. Calzaghi, I think, yeah. Mm. I tell you what, Calzaghi got the rub of the green because I was just touching on it with my girlfriend before saying going to America, getting knocked down and coming back and, you know, winning mm, the fight. He first didn't get... ends, wasn't it? Yeah, he didn't get... Uh, yeah, and mm. Hopkins. But the, the, Hopkins Calzaghi... fight, the, Sorry, Ho- the Hopkins fight, some people say like they felt that Hopkins won, you know, whatever. That's not mm-hmm. what we're talking about, but... Um, Kawasaki landed more punches on um, Hopkins than any other fighter, including Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, yeah, he's he's so underrated because Algi was. He's mm. a fantastic yeah. fighter. Very yeah. fast hands. Yeah. I think I think the coming of age of him was when he absolutely destroyed Jeff Lacey. Mm. And nobody gave him a prayer in that fight, and then mm. he he also then beat a very very young good Kessler. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's a fight. great fight. But, but there's one, there's one heavyweight that deserves a mention, I think, and he could trouble all three of them. Is Jarrell Miller? Oh, really? Mm. I really think that he could trouble all three of them because he's, he's just like a tank. And I've seen yeah. him get hit and hit and hit, and in the end, that will take its toll. But mm. he, he, he's, he's just 
freak yeah. of nature. He doesn't look like yeah. a boxer, does he? Though he looks uh, like some power builder. And I, I was laughing yeah. when I seen a picture of him. And then I watched him on YouTube. This guy's no mug. He's got speed and power. Yes, and his stamina's fantastic. He can go like that for twelve rounds. Yeah, he looks a little bit like a uh, David Tua or something. Yeah, yeah I, I think yeah. he can trouble all three of them. I really do. Mm. What about this uh, Joyce? He's heavyweight, isn't it? Joy Joyce. Yeah. Yeah, I've, it's just something about him that does, does. I don't know what it is. I was watching him again last night, and uh, yeah, I know he won in one round, and the guy had a good record. But I do, I believe that he was kind of his punches look amateur when he's throwing them. Mm. It's I don't know what it is with him. I think he's gonna get. He'll get found out by the better heavyweights. Mm. There was parts in that fight. That guy, I said, he looks a good boxer. This guy, next minute, sparks out on the floor. So mm. he did get tested in that fight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've all, all the heavyweights, uh, there's a lot of good ones, but they've all got flaws. So, you know, the, the only way to find out would be for them to actually, you know, fight each other. I'm interested to see the, what the outcome of the white Chisora again. Yeah, that's, that's another I good... felt that Chisora won the first fight. Yeah, I thought he probably edged it. Yeah, yeah me too, yeah. He, he has been on the back of a lot of shocking decisions, Chisora. Yeah, he's yeah. when he got robbed in Finland, didn't he, against Alanius? Oh, yeah, that was one of the yeah. worst robberies I've ever seen. He's like the the British Glenn Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was doing well against David Day until he started, I don't know what he was doing, launching with his punches, and then he got caught. I thought, what are you doing? I thought he could have beat David Day in that fight. Mm. Yeah, he, he he looked good at the start, didn't he? He, he was mm. quite sharp, and it was probably the best Derek Chisora I've seen. Yeah, and then, uh, I'd like but, to see Chisora and White against the likes of Gerald Miller. Yeah, yeah, that's the fight that I want to see White and Parker as well. Yeah, those, Parker those... And Miller would be good because yeah. Parker seems to have a granite chin. Yeah, 